In the late 1950s, Jonas Salk, famous for creating a polio vaccine, wanted to create a research institute. A site in San Diego was chosen. An architect named Louis Kahn was chosen. And it was clear that Salk envisioned a building that would be itself a work of art. One of the mandates that he gave to Kahn was, was he wanted a place that, that would be worthy of a visit by Pablo Picasso. Greg Lemke is a professor of neurobiology at Salk Institute, who's also an avid follower of architecture trends. And what better place for him to work than a building whose lines and geometry and embrace of the Pacific Ocean have made it an architectural icon and a national historic landmark. But the things visitors don't see are what make it a great building for science. For instance, the skeleton of trusses that bear the building's weight. There's a series of trusses that span from these towers here to the exterior stairwells. And what that means as a practical matter is there none of the interior walls of these laboratory spaces support any weight. And that means interior walls can be made out of drywall that can be broken down to reconfigure spaces or from glass to let in natural light and create an open atmosphere. Salk and his architect wanted to create a collaborative space where scientists would encounter each other and observe each other's work. Lemke shows us a corridor of connected labs. And so when you walk down this corridor, you're walking from one lab to the next lab to the next lab. There are no walls between them, there are no barriers. This was a unique design feature um, at the time. It's been emulated and duplicated in science labs all over the world. The beauty of the building is that it is now about 60 years old and it has continued to keep pace with our changing science. Srikant Chalasani is a neurology professor at Salk who has seen the building change to meet his research needs. One time, he needed a new room to accommodate experiments his lab would do with mice. He says he talked to the Institute's facilities guys and they configured a new room. Getting the new room took about two weeks. All they had to do was stick some metal poles from the ceiling to the floor and then stick pieces of drywall in. That was it. Of course, in the early 60s, Salk architects couldn't predict the future and they couldn't prepare for every technological change. One of them, says Chalasani, is the use of wireless technology. The poured reinforced concrete the Salk buildings are made of is great when it comes to blocking cell and Wi-Fi signals. The Institute has had to install more than a thousand Wi-Fi access points like this one to address the problem. And then there are the teak shutters and panels that Louis Kahn made a key aspect of the building. The local environment, which includes very acidic eucalyptus trees, caused tremendous degradation. A lot of the uh, spores that come off of the sap that gets suspended in the air deposits out on the wood, which then, uh, joined with the moisture of the ocean air and what have you, creates dry rot and, and um, surface degradation. Tim Ball, the facilities manager at Salk, said it cost just under $10 million to restore the teak panels. The process was all the more difficult because Salk had to meet strict historic preservation rules as a national historic landmark. The teak panels and shutters frame the personal study of Greg Lemke as he opens a window with a view to the Pacific Ocean. He says building a place like the original Salk buildings would be prohibitively expensive today, especially the creation of interstitial floors. Those are short floors between each main floor that provide valuable storage space and contain the guts of the building, such as the electricity and the gas lines. There is a new building plan for the Salk campus. Ball says it will be built in the same style, lined up with the original plaza and its symbolic stream called the Channel of Life. It'll have a, an open slot roof that will allow us to take the, the view from the sky to the sea, being transformed from a channel of life from a light and air standpoint to the water feature in the main courtyard, which is the channel of life that leads to the Sea of Discovery. The Salk Institute is fundraising for the new building now. They hope to break ground on it by the end of the year. Thanks for watching. I'm Thomas Fudge with KPBS News. I cover science and technology. And if you want to see more, go ahead and like this video, then hit the subscribe button.